쉽지 않을 거예요. 어, 타니 피티나 오세요. 웰컴. 아이 for some reason I'm just seeing the waiting room so I'm glad to see the three of you. I'm glad that you joined us. We'll go ahead and get started. Just want to make sure that my record is on. Okay. All right. Well, welcome to Writing with Wonders and Letters. Hopefully you had a great spring break and we're just going to jump right in to um Writing with Wonders, an overview. Well, there we go. Uh, we do have a Padlet. If you, um, I'm going to drop this. Well, well, I was going to drop the link in the chat if you wanted to, because there are a few resources on there, um, as well as a place for you to write any questions. So. I gotta find the chat. There we go. So I will drop the link to the Padlet in the chat because there are some resources from both Wonders and Letters on the Padlet. So if you have a chance to open it, otherwise, if you are logging in later, you can scan the QR code. All right, you've seen our professional development norms. Thank you for being here to be focused on students. Uh, we are small and we are really about your learning. So please engage and ask all of the questions that you can possibly think of. Um, if you are comfortable turning your camera on, do you can blur your background. Uh, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to turn on your microphone and ask or to drop it in the chat or to use the Padlet. We want to make sure we answer all of your questions as well as we can. Hey, um, Leslie, it's Tanya. For whatever reason, I about the framework and what we're going to talk about today when we're talking about what wonders is all of the stuff in the blue, the standards, the evidence-based priorities, both academic and behavior, but mostly academic because we're focusing on the uh, wonders writing portion. And then uh, hopefully we might mention time allocation, but hopefully it'll be a part of your day and your planning. We're really starting with the writing standards. The writing standards, even in the new version, will still have the three main types of writing, uh, opinion, informative, and narrative. And Wonders does include uh, extended writing projects on all three types. Most of us this year have been focused on the um, response to writing. And then next year, we're hoping to get a little bit more into those green pages in the Wonders platform and the Wonders book that focus on more extended writing projects that cover those, specifically those three writing standards. Our learning intention for our short time together is to learn very, very generally how letter strategies support the writing assignments in the green pages of Wonders so we can plan and scaffold our writing tasks for students. So as we go through the um, Wonders writing process, we'll bring up as often as we can how it aligns with letters. And we'll know we're successful when we understand how the letter strategy support the writing tasks in Wonders. And please, if we're going too fast or you have any questions, just turn on your mic. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so um, our agenda today is pretty simple. We're just trying to do two things. One is do a very brief, like Leslie said, introduction related to the flow of writing in wonders. So what are the pieces of the writing process? How does it flow in those green pages in the wonders um, teacher's manual? And we have also then added the additional visuals from letters that support the, the components of the writing process in wonders. So there's there's a lot of overlap, um, but it's more specifically about the like 10 components of the writing 
within the wonders extended um, tasks, which are uh, represented in the green pages behind the blue text sets in your wonders teacher's manual. All right, so on page 245 in letters, as is shown at the bottom of this slide, um, you can refer to this. We learned it in unit eight of the letters training. Um, the suggestions that as far as teachers moves for teaching writing are to provide daily time for students to write. And um, in a minute, we'll talk about where that is already built into your ELA block. Um, teach students to use the writing process for a variety of purposes, including planning, drafting, revision, and editing. And there are suggestions for how to do that with feedback, not only from the teacher, but also from peers, probably not until later in the year, because you really have to train that so that your kids are kind and constructive in their feedback. Teach students to write for a variety of purposes. So like Leslie said, the narrative, the persuasion and for expository writing, and then also teach them to become fluent with handwriting, spelling, sentence construction, typing, and work processing. So it's not just a question of being able to do it, but if you remember in the letters training where we had to do the exercise and we used our less dominant hand to actually write a response to something, nobody wrote as much or as well or exactly, we chose words differently depending on how we could write it with our less dominant hand. So we wanna really build that fluency so that we can get our ideas down on paper and make them come to fruition in a finished product writing. That's from hey, Tanya, you got it to work. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, um, one of the main best practices for teaching writing is to set aside time to practice writing every day. And this is where the kids are maybe struggling with their stamina because they, they're not used to it. And I think this year they did more writing in the Reader Writer Companion than they've been used to in the past. And now we are going to move beyond that and push them even further. So as we go through the process of writing as it's presented in Wonders, you will see that maybe 20 minutes isn't going to be enough every day. And that's where you as a team and as a school and with your coach and administrators are gonna need to have conversations about, if I take 10 minutes from my whole group here can I make up that reading instruction time during week six? And that's why we have that flexibility built in for week six and for unit six. And I haven't heard differently that that is going to change for next year. So as far as I know, those are both flexible at this time. And you, you will want to take advantage of that flexibility in order to be able to really push writing because we know that it is the highest cognitively rigorous activity they can do in ELA. And we want them to be using what they have learned from the text sets, using evidence, citing evidence to get their ideas down in an orderly fashion that makes sense using the vocabulary that they've been given. and it takes time and it's going to take more time at the beginning than it will at the end because as they get better at it and they practice that, you know, they, they use that muscle and they build up their writing muscle, it's going to come more easily for them. Again, if any questions or comments, feel free to jump in or put it in the chat or just turn on your mic. All right, so we wanted to start with the process. What is the Wonders extended writing process? We know that with um, the rollout of Wonders, we kind of just said focus on just the reading writing companion and getting those text sets done. And that's enough because there was a lot of writing in the reading writing companion and trying to get the time, trying to get it all in the time was a lot. 
So the hope is that next year you'll be able to get it in at the time and start to add some of that extended writing. We'll go into more detail about this on district day, but what we wanted to cover today is what does it look like? What is the wonders writing process and how does it align to um, letters? And you can see on the left, that's their 10 day plan. And this is for all of the grades. It follows the, the same 10 day plan with, you know, some variance and it's only a few sentences in the lower grades. And up to paragraphs in the upper grades. But the plan is each time they will start by analyzing the rubric. So if it's an opinion piece, you'll analyze the opinion rubric and start with that. Second step is to identify the central idea of the text and the supporting details. So you'll go back to and start to refer to the texts that you've been reading for those um, two weeks, because that's what they're going to write about. The next step is analyzing a student model. So look at an example paper and talk about how that example paper, that student model fits in with the rubric. And then the next thing you're going to analyze the prompt. So what are we asked to do? What are we going to be writing about? And then you'll go back to the texts and analyze your sources, which We'll be referring back to your graphic organizers, your reading, writing companions, the things that you've used as your kids have been reading already. So some of this will have been done in other parts of your reading, your ELA lesson. Once you've gone back and analyzed all of those before you've even started writing, then your kids will start to organize their ideas. Use some graphic organizers or um, other planning tools to just get their ideas on the paper. And then they'll write the draft and then they'll do that all important thing of that we learned about in letters is revision because that's really where the improvement of the writing is. So it's only one step on the plan, but that revision really is a couple of days because it's so important and it relates to letters. You can see that it kind of really mirrors um, a lot of the writing planning checklists that we saw in letters, but you can also see something that's important important that we learned in letters is that writing is recursive. Like it's almost never perfect. Stephen King says that my, none of my books are ever perfect. There's just a point where my editor said, publish it. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so if our kids get that idea that we're just going to keep getting better, um, they're going to plan, they're going to draft and get feedback. They're going to review and revise and go back and plan a little bit better, how to make it a little bit better and refine what they've written. And if I could add on before we mm -hmm. move forward. Um, the, the steps of identify central idea of the text and the supporting details, that's their first read. And those three texts are provided in the reader writer companion. So they go along with the text sets in the blue pages, but they are actually standalone texts. And then they go back to that exacts those three pieces of text when they analyze the source again. So that's where they really pick it apart and annotate the um, evidence and the details that are supporting those main ideas that they found up towards the top. So they, they go back into those texts in addition to working through the blue pages and the essential question, but they are related as far as the set the the essential question and they're kind of the topics it's not like you're doing you know space exploration in your blue pages and then the text set for your writing is on you know, transportation in the 1900s or something you know it's they go together but they are separate texts but they're much shorter thank you Right. The first step then is to analyze the rubric. And you can see it's a pretty general rubric like we have used or that you might have seen like the one Susan created. This is the expository and it's going to look the same for all of the expository. So you go through the rubric with the kids. And again, like Susan said, the first time you do it, it's going to take a long time. But by the third time they're writing expository, this is going to be pretty brief because they'll have seen the expository rubric and know what to expect of it. So first step, every extended writing is to analyze the rubric. And you'll do it when you start with narrative. You'll do it when you start with expository. You'll do it when you start with uh, opinion. 
And then, you know, the second time you do expository, it's not going to take as long. The third time it'll just be, hey, remember what our rubric looks like. You might, in the beginning of the year, only be focused on one part of the rubric. Like, by all means, this is perfectly reasonable and a great writing tactic. You might start the year out by saying, this time we're only going to focus on our um, evidence and elaboration. I just want to see how well we're able to take stuff from the text and write about it and then just work through that with your kids. And then the next expository say, OK, now we're going to work, worry about your focus and organization. So we'll do both the second time. So also something to keep in mind, even though this is the complete rubric, I would not at the beginning of the year grade on the whole rubric or make the kids worry about the whole all of it, um, because that's a lot. So I would just pick the one thing I want to work on with them, depending on which standards I'm working on. And then by the end of the year, I'd want to, you know, be looking whole rubric. But for the first half of the year, I would pick parts of the rubric I'm working on. So. All right. And as Leslie said. Um, oh, the Natalie. Natalie had a question, please. Oh. So is, do you know if anyone has like condensed all of the rubrics onto one page? Because I have used it with my students and it's kind of a challenge to, because they have them in the back of the green section mm -hmm. or like it would be great if we could get them blown up on posters that we could have in our room. We, I think we can do that. We've done that with a lot of materials and I yeah. think a poster is great. I think that's great. And in one of the Friday memos previously, we did send out simplified student rubrics. So that may be where you want to start before you go into the more detailed, heavy rubrics. They're much simpler. And they were on, if you go to the jump page for the Friday memos, I don't remember exactly which one it was in, sorry. But um, it, yeah. it was brought up in one of them. We sent out those rubrics and there's a teacher rubric and there's also a, a student friendly rubric in addition to those that you have access to in the Wonders platform. So I think however you, whatever your kids need you to do should be your guide. Well, it, are they taken from Wonders, the ones that are on the jumpstart? So, so take the language is wonders. It's not like a whole different product that I did. Yeah, yeah, it is from and it simplified though. So they started with the the wonders and then they made a student version. So it should have similar language, just be simplified. And I think it might be nice to have a poster, like you said, of of the complete one, but also the student version. So that's a great question. Hey, Les, maybe this summer I'll have time to go through all the Friday yeah. emails. For I, know. That, but I won't now. So. No, no. <laughs> okay. Natalie, you had another, or Tanya, you had another question? Yeah, I'm looking. I printed off a rubric in January mm -hmm. that says I'm second grade analytical writing rubric respond to reading. Is that the one you're talking about? That was the one for the respond to reading. Yes, that's the one I was thinking of. But there are also, and I don't know if they're complete, there are also student-friendly um, versions of these two, of the expository. So if you haven't received those yet, you will. For all the grade levels? Because she's saying second grade and I'm third That's grade. She got the second grade memo. Yeah, it oh, should be. Right, right. They do it by grade. Gotcha. Yeah. But they yeah. should be for each grade, though. I think like the rubrics K2 are pretty similar and then 3-5. So... But yeah, they can resend out the friendly version. I'm not sure if this is the one you're referring to or not. It's kind of friendly, but um, probably not to a second grade. <laughs> yeah. And the analytical writing one, too, is specifically for the response, response to, to reading. reading. Yeah. Right. So there you guys will... resend it to us? Like, we'll that, that for our future. That would be great. Sure. Yeah. We'll add that for our future Friday email. Okay. Thank you. So. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Good Great. questions. Thank you. All right. So looking at this, um, this is where after you look at the rubric, you are going to identify the main idea and the details. So you go to your reader writer companion and on that right hand side panel on each page next to each of the three texts. Well, I guess one of them is on the left. 
um, but it guides you through picking out the relevant main idea and the details. You're not looking for all the super nitty gritty. You're trying to see what is the overall idea that connects these three text pieces and what is the general, you know, what, what's kind of the big main idea and then maybe a few of the details. This isn't where you get super nitty gritty because you're gonna get super nitty gritty and put each one into a graphic organizer. So this is guided by the questions that are provided in the Reader Writer Companion for you, okay? And that also relates to the simple view of writing in the composition area. So there's that connection to letters for you. The next step in the writing process in Wonders is to analyze the student model. So on the right-hand side, I took a screenshot of the writer's notebook, which you can find in the Wonders digital platform. If you go to the, instead of the reading tab on the far left, you go to the writing tab and it's green, I think. And you click on that green tab and go to teacher resources as it shows in the picture here. And when you click on those teacher resources for whatever unit you're in, it has all of these models and, and things that are completed for you. So there's, there's a completed graphic organizer that we're going to see coming up. This is a a model student paper that's already written. So the idea is that you can use this and whatever piece of the rubric that you are targeting for them, depending on what writing standard you're really trying to get at and go through this and model for them this is where this piece of the rubric is. You can highlight it, you can underline, you could copy these off for the kids in your class and have them maybe down the line, pick it apart while they're looking at the rubric and really um, analyze the model and see how this student modeled for them what a great paper looks like so that they have something, they know what the end product should be. Otherwise, they're just kind of wandering around in the dark and who knows what they're going to come up with. So if we show them the exemplar, then they'll know what the expectation is in order to meet all the pieces in the rubric. The next step in the process is to analyze the prompt. Again, you're going back into the Reader Writer Companion and you are going to want to model for them and pick out any vocabulary that's in the prompt that they may not be familiar with. They are going, you could do um, examples and non-examples of if I use this as my topic sentence, would that answer and support the prompt or not? Yes or no. You could do this a million different ways and it, it is guided for you and for them in your reader writer companion. So, if they do this, they're not going to come up with a paper that's really, really good about something that doesn't actually respond to the prompt. And then again, if you consider the writing planning checklist that you were given in letters that's on the right hand side of the page, that helps them think through like what what kind of genre am I writing? What is who's my audience? What's my purpose in writing this? those kinds of things. So I think a combination of, of using these tools to develop your clarity on what the task is, you will be very well able to guide them through the process. Questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. <laughs> All right, so the next step is to analyze the source. And this is really where you dig in and you get nitty gritty because you're looking for really your, your main ideas and as many details as you get can get because you're going to be putting these into the graphic organizer that's coming up, I think, on the next slide. So again, it is guided by the, the questions in the panel next to the text. And this is their second read with this. 
So they will have already gone through it first, looking for the general kind of overview and idea, what are we talking about? But now they're getting specific to each of the pieces of text and within each piece of text. Right, the next step is to start to plan and organize those ideas. So now that they've read the texts and they've taken their notes, they're moving their reading notes into a writing planner. And this is also in the reading writing companion. So you can see that you're going to work with them to just move their reading notes into a writing planning tool. Uh, there are some in, there's one in every reading writing companion in the unit in the reading writing companion, but there are also others available to you um, in the resources part of wonders or also there are a number of the letters graphic organizers that would work as well so feel free to use other organizing tools based on what your kids need but there are some tools directly in the reading writing companion so you can see that all, what they're doing here is taking their notes from their reading and starting them starting to put them in um, a writing planning tool and the top one is what it looks like. The green one is what it looks like in the reading writing companion. But then you can see that they also supply you in those um, resources, uh, a teacher tool that's filled in. So this one in the middle is what it looks like filled in for you to help your kids fill it out. So this is kind of just helping with the letter support of moving that background knowledge and their topic knowledge to their writing now with the composition. And again, with this, I think um, at the beginning of the year, obviously, it's going to be much harder for them. So after you, I, I know that classroom discussion is a huge part of preparing them to be able to put anything down on paper. And I think that based on those classroom discussions, at the beginning, you're going to need to scaffold and model what goes into this graphic organizer in much more detail. Whereas later in the year, you're going to take away that really super mega detailed scaffold and make write maybe a couple anchor words or critical words so that they then need to use those foundational writing skills to turn your word into a complete sentence, that sort of thing. And that's going to move them closer to being able to actually create a draft. Which is the next step. Now they take that planning tool and they draft it. Um, just like any process writing, it's just taking from their organizer to putting it in a draft page. Uh, you can use any format that you want to, whether you're having them handwrite it, especially in the younger grades or even the upper grades, because what we learn from letters is sometimes their writing is better and they produce more handwritten than they do typing. Um, so it's just starting to get all of their ideas on the page in a draft form, uh, using their working memory and their cognitive flexibility just to get everything they can on the paper and get their ideas. And sometimes too, especially at the beginning of the year, Getting all the ideas on the paper is enough for the draft because the next step is what's really going to make their paper better, and that's getting the revision and the feedback. So we learned from letters that there are lots of ways they can get feedback, peer feedback with checklists, self-evaluation with checklists, you doing conferences, you sitting with them and just looking at a paragraph. But the last step second to last step is getting that feedback. What would they improve? Um, there are lots of ways you can do it. There are checklists in wonders. There are checklists in letters, both of which you might be able to find on the Padlet that I dropped in earlier. And so just getting them feedback to improve. And I'd really start at the beginning of the year, just focusing that feedback on whatever you're focusing on the rubric. So if the first thing we're focusing on is evidence and elaboration, Focus the feedback on evidence and elaboration, not, not conventions or anything like that, because that's an editing self-check or something. So I'd focus here on whatever I'm focusing on on the rubric. That's what I want to focus my feedback on so that they're just worried about improving what I want them to improve for this draft. 
All right. So we're, we're out of time, are... but we have like one more step. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just so you know, in the green pages, they give you a couple different options. Um, each day, there's a five to 10 minute mini lesson that has been provided for you. And you will need to obviously pick and choose depending on what your students need. They might be things that you could do during your small group if you wanted to pull them back. And there's a special group that needed work on nouns or, or combining sentences or things like that. So you can figure out what's the best and most logical, um, which, which lessons to actually present. And if you wanna present them whole group or small group, and this is what they look like in your teacher's manual. And so you can choose either crafting and writing lessons or grammar lessons or spelling lessons or combinations of each. You know, throughout the two weeks, you might do a couple craft lessons, a couple grammar lessons, uh, depending on whatever you're focusing on and what your kids need the most help with. Right. And again, think about the ELA block and there's only 20 minutes for writing right now each day. <laughs> so that's why I mentioned that you might want to be more flexible with your whole group time and go into that week six, because if you wanted to teach more of these mini lessons, especially at the beginning of the year. Awesome. Uh, that's general overview of the process <laughs> and wonders. Really, fast. really, really fast, very quickly. Um, Lots of resources. Each of your coaches got that book on the left, The Writing Revolution, that has some more support. And it's also one we saw referenced in letters. So if you wanted to find out more, you could borrow it from your coach or you could work with your coach. Or we will be talking more about these pages on District Day. Or feel free to reach out to us. Yay! Yay! And we've already kept you. So there are resources on that Padlet that we would love for you to access or send us any questions. And since there are just the three of you who joined us today, we're going to send you each a thank you prize Yay. in the district's mail. <laughs> and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, that was a very quick overview, but we're glad you joined us. Thanks. It was great to see you all. <laughs> Bye.